Ladies and gentlemen, I am your host, Jeffrey Lazarus, and you are watching Welcome to Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons on the Gaming Vector. This is a single-player cooperative puzzle game, and we'll get to exactly what that means here in a minute. This is developed by Starbreeze Studios. These are the same guys who made the Chronicles of Riddick games, as well as the same team who made the Payday titles. This is something a little bit different from either of those. So, as you can see, it's got a very nice kind of watercolor art style. Very much a fan of that. It's a gorgeous game to look at. So let's go ahead and jump into help and options real quick. And if we go under how to play, what you will see here on the screen is that each of the sticks controls one of the two brothers, the big brother and the little brother, as well as the triggers allow each of them to interact with objects. So that's what I mean by single player cooperative. It is one person controlling two characters who must work together. Also, if we jump down to the settings here, video options, basic brightness setting, audio options, you'll notice that we have music and sound effects, but we do not have a, a speech volume, and I believe that is because there's no actual English in this game. The characters kind of speak a gibberish language, but you very much get what, what they're going for by their, the inflection of the words as well as the body language. It's actually quite brilliant. They managed to tell a pretty engaging story, at least up to this point, with no actual lines of dialogue. So if we go ahead and jump in here, and we're going to go, there is a chapter select option. I'm actually going to skip the prologue, we'll jump straight into chapter 1, so I can show you a bit of the gameplay. Yes, that is fine. And once it loads up here, we'll be able to see exactly how this game plays. So there we've got the two characters, and the left stick controls the big brother, the right stick controls the little brother, and we're just going to progress forward through this village. Now, as you can see, we have... whoops. I don't know if those are... Uh, they appear to be dynamic shadows. Also, you can see there are some alternate paths, although they're not really all that important. This is mostly a puzzle game, and once we get down to the bottom of the hill here, we will begin to see the puzzle elements. So, once we get down here, you can see we have a gate. Now, if we have the little brother pushing the gate, he pushes it rather slowly. We can also walk up here with the big brother and have him push it, or we can have them, well, we can have them work together and they can actually open it much quicker. And that's just a real basic idea of the kind of things that happen in this game. Also, ambient sounds very good. The controls aren't bad, I probably just make them look bad simply because it's difficult for me to control both characters at the same time. But luckily there's nothing that I've seen that you have to do incredibly f quickly. So it ends up being mostly a non-issue. Now, both of these characters do also kind of have their own set of abilities, which we will see a bit later on. But first, we have one of our first real puzzle segments, so we've got this large dog, right? Now what I can do is have the little brother over here on the right use his interaction, and that calls at the dog. And the big brother can do the same. And while he's doing that, I can begin kind of platforming across this. Just have to make sure we fully grab his attention before we head on to the next platform, or else he will turn around and try and kill our characters. So yeah, you can see that, that great art style, and also, well, almost messed that up really badly. And also the, the ambient noises in this game are great. The sounds, for the most part, have been pretty good. So once we make it through this section, we will hopefully see some of the more interesting puzzle elements. Now, once again, this is just the first chapter, so there's still a lot of game left after this, at least I assume there is. I don't know how many chapters there actually are, so it's hard to say how long this game is, but... Hey! 
I am assuming that it will at least go far enough to show some rather interesting puzzles, at least in the later sections of the game. So there we've actually made it past that dog, now we can just move along. And once again, having trouble controlling the two characters. But my basic thoughts on this game right now, as we go ahead and start climbing up this wall, I am having a great time with it. You probably won't get to see it in this video, but they do a really good job of telling a story and making you connect with the characters and feel for the characters without any sort of dialogue at all. Like, they, they you know, you have the, um, the very basic kind of gibberish that they speak, but that's about it. So here is actually a puzzle where the two characters' different abilities come into play. So the little brother, he can't make that jump on his own. But if we bring the big brother over here and have him interact, he will actually boost the little one up to the ledge. Who can then throw down a rope to the big brother if I get the interaction. There we are. The other thing is they're very forgiving with the context sensitivity of the actions, as hopefully we'll be able to see here in a moment. But yes, you need to jump from these various platforms, and you have to pull the interact button every time you're about to grab one. If you don't, that happens. Now, I have seen the characters... Oh, wow, just flat missed that one. I have seen the characters get killed, but only once so far. It seems to be a fairly forgiving game. It is mostly about puzzles, which for some reason I keep forgetting to pull the trigger again. There are jump, and jump one more time. And I'm hoping that the puzzles get more interesting as the game goes on. But really... Ah, okay, so here is another puzzle where the two characters' different abilities come into play. So if we have the big brother getting the wheel here, he can turn this wheel, which drops this bridge. Then we can send the little one across over to where the sheep are. Now, there's really nothing he can do from here, aside from pet the sheep. Also, if I try and move on too far ahead, he automatically stops like that, turns around and yells at his brother, Hey, come on, we need to go... You know, whatever. But if we actually swap their positions, you will see that the little brother can still successfully lower this, but the big brother can actually pick up one of these sheep and carry him back across the bridge so that we can throw him in the wheel to actually keep the bridge down so that both characters can cross. So once again, just trying to get both characters moving in the correct directions at the same time. Oh, di okay, yeah, there we are. For a second I was like, does it matter which way I put him in there? I didn't think it did. Yeah, so just heading on ahead with the two main characters here. And yeah, I, I'm really liking the art style of this game. I'm really liking that it's a lot of ambient noises. There's not a whole lot of music, but... When there is music, it seems like... Oh, climb up the thing. There we are. When there is music, it seems like it's important. And as you can see, we're now up above where we were, and we're actually coming up to the end of this section where my next checkpoint is. So I'm going to get to that point so you can kind of see what happens there and kind of see what I'm talking about with the uh, kind of building of characters without dialogue. And then we will probably give a quick final verdict on this. I know this is going to be a short video, but I actually don't want to show off too much of the game because I don't want to spoil much of anything. So once we make our way around this rock here, we will see a little bit of what I've been talking about.
So right there you could see some pretty good characterization just through the animations of the characters and through kind of the inflection of the words and the way that they, they move and the way that they act. So let's actually jump out of here and we'll go back to the main menu while I kind of give my final verdict on Brothers A Tale of Two Sons. And really the final verdict is, you know, number one, great art style. Number two, the music and sound. I wouldn't say that it's necessarily phenomenal, but it's pretty good. Like, number three, the gameplay is at least interesting, and they're trying something new with the whole controlling two characters at once, and both of them kind of having different sets of abilities, which is at the very least interesting. And the the storytelling, at least what I've seen up to this point, has been very compelling and very enthralling. And basically what it comes down to is, this is the first title of Summer of Arcade this year. It's a $15 game, and I highly, highly recommend it. If, from the little gameplay snippet that I've given you, this game looks the least bit interesting whether it be from an art perspective or a gameplay perspective or from a storytelling perspective, go give it a shot because I have a feeling, and this is just my gut instinct because I've only played a couple hours of the game, so I can't say for sure, but I have the feeling that in the coming years, this game is going to be regarded up there with games like Journey and Braid and Limbo and a lot of those other, you know, really cheap but really fantastic games that are kind of must-plays for a lot of people. So, absolutely, if you've got the money laying around, then go pick this up and give it a shot if it looks even the tiniest bit interesting to you. And if not, then at least try out the demo and check it out and see what you think of it. But from what I've seen so far, this looks like it's going to be one of those games that is talked about for a long time. With all of that being said, I have been your host, Jeffrey Lazarus, and thank you for watching. Welcome to Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons on the Gaming Vector.